So I'm just going to go through four terms here, which, which cause a lot of problems, really, um, when you're talking about meiosis. So chromosomes, chromatids, homologous chromosomes, and bivalence. Um, they're all different things, um, but the terms get used a bit interchangeably, really, and I want to just try and um, clear some of them up. So a chromosome, normally inside of um, the nucleus, uh, let me just get another colour, chromosomes are long thread-like structures that you'd no not normally be able to see. Okay, so there's a chromosome, and I'm going to draw here another chromosome, and I could say that that one is um, a maternal chromosome from the mother, and that one is the paternal. In humans, um, we would have 23 of these pairs, okay, and they're paired up on the basis of, on, on their length really. Each pair in here um, would have the same genes on, on each one, but there might be different versions of the genes, so the alleles, in other words, might be different. You might get one allele from your mother and a different allele from your father, or you might get the same alleles. Nothing sort of complex there. Now, the problem is that because you never normally see them like this, they're too long and thin, um, we usually see chromosomes when they have condensed, and this happens either just before um, mitosis, or, or during mitosis, um, or during meiosis, okay? So this kind of X-shaped structure um, that we normally see. Now, these are still both referred to as chromosomes. We can call that a chromosome, we can call that a chromosome, okay? However, in this case, each of the chromosomes is made up of a pair of sister chromatids. So if we kind of zoomed in, there's one chromatid and there's the other chromatid. Okay, held together there with, with the centromere. So that's one sister chromatid. And that's one sister chromatid. I'm not going to write the whole thing. Or maybe I have. There we go. So a, chrom uh, a chromatid is each individual strand. Remember that these strands are actually formed during interphase, um, although you wouldn't see them again. When they form, they would sit next to each other, but they'd both be very long strands. It only takes on this, this X shape when it supercoils, when it condenses, um, just prior to cell division. Okay. Homologous chromosome means two members, um, two chromosomes of the same pair. Okay, so they're homologous chromosomes, they're homologous chromosomes, and if I drew them both separately again, here they are sort of all tangled up like they would be, they are homologous chromosomes. Okay, it's all the same, I could have drawn that over here, shouldn't have really. Um, it's all the same thing. They're both members of the same pair, so you know that might be, I don't know, let's say that's pair one, you could also have pair two, which is a bit shorter, and, and so on. Okay, make it a complete hash of that, so that's pair number two, that's pair number two. Again, remembering that one come, one is maternal, one is paternal. Now, bivalent is specifically um, in meiosis. And if you remember in meiosis, the important stage, really, the, the key stage to remember, is um, in kind of prophase one, um, and, and just before metaphase one, when the homologous chromosome pairs line up opposite each other. I'll we'll just draw it very simply. There's one homologous pair, there's another homologous pair, and they line up next to each other, uh, and this is when chiasmata occurs, the cross, <coughs> excuse me, the crossing over. So the bivalent is the pair of homologous chromosomes lined up together, okay, just prior to, to crossing over and while crossing over is happening. So chromosomes, all of these are examples of chromosomes, except we start to refer to, it's usually preferable to refer to, uh, when you've got this X shape, as the chromosome being made of a pair of sister chromatids. Um, and that'll be come important when we, we look in a second at, um, or look on another video, at, at chiasma and chiasmata.